Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going back onto the shaper I'm pushing pushing trying to get this over the line so we're going to get our new motor that I showed in a couple of weeks ago's video fitted to the machine uh, Apologies for the noise, we've got the heater on I've just come in here and it's minus 7 degrees C uh, which is 19.4 degrees in bananas uh, so it's a little bit parky I love that expression it <laughs> makes me smile every time so, we, as I said, we're going to fit the motor, we're going to make a subplate to go between the motor fittings and the machine fitting on the table at the back. Not quite sure what with or what out of, or, so we'll figure that out in a moment. And then we're going to fit the motor, adjust the belt, get the tension about right, and then if there's time in this episode, depending on how quickly that goes and how much film footage I shoot, I'm going to crack on with getting the VFD that I showed probably three or four episodes ago up on the wall and start to put some poke some wires in randomly and see if, you know, see if we can get it wired up <laughs> which is probably about as scientific as it's going to get with electrics with me so that will be fun and interesting so without any more waffling we'll get the shaper out into the open space uh, what little bit of it there is and we will crack on with measuring up to get the motor subplate made so we can get the motor fitted to the machine. Okay so here's our motor mount plate as it came on the machine as standard. I've set my adjustment to roughly the middle of the adjustment range in terms of where this can go. I've leveled up now my bracket so I know that the motor plate is level with the rest of the machine. So what we're going to do is bring our, our new motor in and for a start we're just going to roughly sit it in place roughly about central of the bracket front to back we're going to get our belt drop it on the top pulley so we've got our belt in the tensioned mode here so this side belt is all tensioned up so what I'm, what I'm doing now is looking at how close this is and it's not close at all so if I now drop my motor in at that tension position and then I lift the motor up until it's kind of parallel with the base I'm just going to measure it's about 10 millimeters off in that tension position so that tells me if I make a subplate or some kind of subplate device, either one full plate or two single bars or whatever to bridge the mounting holes on the motor, I need to be aiming for about 10 millimeters thick. At that point, my belt should be about bang on the right tension and I've then got full range both forwards and backwards in terms of the adjustment on the plate so that's that's how we're going to attack this so I'm going to go and have a dig around and see what materials I've got I'm going to have a think about once I find the materials we've got to use I'm then going to have a think about do we do we put two bridges across like this way or do I to put two bridges across this way? Either way would work. I'm going to need to bolt the bridges down to the base and then drill some holes into the new bridges for the mounting screws to hold the motor down. That's probably how we're going to do it. I've had a look at the old plate on the old motor and it's not going to do what I need for this, so we're going to, we're going to go from scratch. So I'll have a dig around, I'll come back and show you what we found. Okay, so next day our paint's dry, so I've dropped my two aluminium spacers on, got those fitted in position, dropped the motor on, I've gone for hex heads to fix the motor down to the intermediary plates for two reasons. One, one really, more, more than anything, is access to tighten them up. If I'd have used socket, socket head cap screws, I would not have been able to get an Allen key in to tighten them up and also hex heads just blends in with all the hex heads on the rest of the machine despite the fact these are metric not imperial so I've got it in its final position 
and all I'm going to do now is go around and just knit these knit these up. So I'll just get in with a spanner, plenty of room. So I've cut my threads on these, I had to shorten these screws a bit. So basically I measured up the thickness of the motor plate and the thickness of the aluminium intermediary plate and I cut the I cut the screws just slightly shorter than the sum of both of those and then I fitted a washer as well so I know for sure that I'm not bottoming out my screws onto the casting plate at the bottom. So there's our motor fitted, happy with that. So the next thing is to play around with the belt tension, which is just a case of moving this adjustment that I've got on this plate to get this belt tension correct. Whilst this one's tensioned on this side, uh, which is dead easy, I'll not film that, that's just playing around with these nuts and tightening them up until we've got that tension correct. I'm now going to move on to the VFD install. So I've made a start which I've not filmed, so I've made a, a fly lead here, obviously not plugged in at the moment because it's very dangerous because the other end's just chopped off, but that's going to be supplying power to the VFD, that's all wired up, the plug's all done, just on that. So the next job is the VFD itself and I've shown this in a previous video, so this is the Siemens VFD unit. What I've done is I've just drilled four new holes in the back because one of the corners up here that have got a hole is missing. So we've just popped four new holes in. I need to get four small screws to screw that up to the wall, which I'll get from indoors. That'll have to be a job for tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to move on to getting the, the other end of this fly lead sorted out with the right terminals to attach to the VFD and then sort in the other wiring out, the three phase wiring to go to the motor on the machine. Now I've actually finally resisted all my <laughs> all my fights I've had over the years in terms of electrics and I've actually splashed out and finally bought myself a decent set of tools for doing electric work. So I've bought a crimp for ferrules, I've bought a wire stripping unit and I've bought a decent crimp for spade ends and so, so this is a ratchet, so it's a ratchet crimp. So we're going to use all of that stuff to get ourselves wired up for the VFD. Okay, time to new, to new, time to use the new toys even. So I've stripped this end to the length of wires I think I need and we're going to have a go with all of this stuff which is exciting I'm struggling a little bit because I'm working around the camera here but and I'm a bit khaki handed but we'll give it a shot oh look at that so much easier than the way I've done it for years and years and years using a Stanley knife. But almost. So I'm enjoying doing electrical stuff now. Not quite, but almost. So we've got our ferrule. We'll pop our ferrule on. That's a good fit. And I've got my I've got my wire right up to the end of the ferrule. So I think that's good. We'll get my ferrule crimps. Apologies, I'm a bit khaki handed trying to work around the camera here guys, it's uh, that. 
looks like a proper job. Almost look like it's been done by somebody who knows what they're doing. Okay, final one, I need a, um, a ring end, yeah, a ring end crimp fitting on there, so I'll just find one of those and bring you back and we get a chance to play with the third new toy. Okay, we've just used our third toy to get us a, a ring end crimp on the earth wire and that's nice and secure not going anywhere so that's got us ready to wire up into the front end of the VFD so that's all done that's that lead complete so I'll wind that up for now and put that to one side so we've got our plug on one end and the wires prepped on that end and I'll bring you back when we're putting this up onto the wall the VFD unit on the wall and getting this this wire connected and then we'll move on to the three phase wire that's going to go from the VFD into the motor on the back of the machine. We're now moving on to the bits that I don't really understand. So this motor's supplied is I believe in what they call star configuration with these connectors, jumpers, whatever you want to call them down here and I need to put them into Delta where these connecting strips go this way across the terminals rather than this way across the terminals. So it sounds like I know what I'm doing, but really, truth be known, all I understand about this is I need to move these from their current position to a different position. Okay, that's got the bit that I understand done, which is nuts, bolts and washers. So now for the now for the bit that I don't really understand, which is changing from star to delta. I think I can put the bottom set of hardware back on here now. And obviously when my wire comes in, I'm only going to be connecting to the, the top terminals, U, V and W. So I'll bring you back when we've got that bit done. Okay, I've taken the the nut off the back of this gland. I've removed what appears to be a kind of rubber blanking plug. I'm presuming that is exactly what that is and I'm not supposed to use it for anything. So we'll ditch that. I've stripped, so this is my three phase wire, which we've got the three line wires and one earth wire. So I've stripped a good long length of that long enough to do the longest connection and then we'll shorten the other wires accordingly and I've put my nut up the cable so I'm going to poke that in here now it's good, it's gripping the wire it would. So that's good and tight. So I'm going to get my crimping, crimping tool and my ring end crimps and we're going to shorten these wires crimping end on and then get them ready for final assembly. So I'll do the crimping off camera this time. I'll bring you back when I've done it 
when we're just connecting the wires up. Okay, so we've got our we've got our wiring done. We've changed over to delta, and we've got our three phases, our three lines in, and our earth fitted. Now my channel seems to be full of disclaimers these days and of all the ones I've done this is probably the most important one and I have to do this just to prevent anybody else hurting themselves based on what I'm doing here so uh, the disclaimer is I am not an electrician if it's not already apparent in the language that I've used I don't fully understand what I'm doing please do not copy what I've done if you're doing something similar to this seek professional advice from an electrician or if you're competent do it on your own but do not copy what I've done because I may not have got this right. Disclaimer over. I've tried my best to make this as neat as I can because I take pride in what I do despite the fact I don't fully understand it. So we'll get the cover plate on here now. I'm just going to take a note of the colours that I've used to UV and W so that when I get to doing the other end at the VFD I know which ones are going to which one I don't have to take this cover plate back off again but I'm fairly happy with what I've done there looks reasonably neat and tidy okay we've got our cover plate back on and what I've also done I've just used a couple of cable ties to clip this cable up to the casting the motor mount casting leaving enough slack in there so it's not tight but really more than anything to make sure this cable doesn't find its way round towards this belt which is a possibility so that keeps it nice and safely out of the way at the back of the machine away from all of the moving parts and because of the way that's tied up it should never be able to find its way round and get in the way of anything that's moving so happy with that we'll now move to the other end of the cable and to the VFD okay next job is to site our VFD on the wall so I've done some preparatory work and I've got some holes drilled into the wooden OSB cladding Yeah, that's got our inverter mounted on the wall so all I've got to do now is sort the, the tail end of the three phase cable out to suit the output from the inverter and also just connect my fly lead that you saw me make earlier so I'll get this stripped and crimped and I'll bring you back when we're doing the final connections. Okay, so we've got our ends ready for fitting. So we've got our ferrules fitted and our ring end. And what I've also done is I wanted something to sit underneath this onto the wall somewhere as an anti-strain device to stop the cable you know pulling out under its own weight or if I catch it and I've got nothing in the workshop at the minute to do that for the size of cable that I've got so I thought well what can I make so what we've done is well I don't know whether this is going to work or not but I've taken an old two and a half mil I think it was two and a half welding rod and I've made myself that so we will attach that to the wall with a screw and hopefully that means that once this is in place that will stop any pull that will help I can pull some slack cable up to the underneath of the VFD and that should act as, a, as a, an anti-strain device we'll try it I'm not quite sure we'll give it a go but it's certainly better than nothing for now until I get something better so we'll get these attached Okay, we figured it out. So we're just putting our earth on, which is the last one. 
and the earth just connects to the heat sink at the back so you've got your earth out to the machine on the bottom side and there's another screw at the top here for the earth in from the mains lead so effectively the heat sink becomes the earth transfer all the way through so that's all good and tight okay so a bit of an update we've got our anti-strain device fitted now I'm really happy with that that works really well I'll probably end up that temporary solution will probably end up becoming permanent that's got some flex in it but it doesn't let these wires get tight so I'm happy with that I've got my top wiring in place got my cable routed to a socket so what we're going to do now is the big switch on and then what I've got this being a Siemens product a very very well written commissioning procedure in good English with a proper flow chart and you basically follow through step by step and it walks you through the setup process of the parameters so you can see there we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten fourteen parameters to set now that's the basic commissioning you can go into much more detail in different levels of the device should you want to but I think for what I'm doing here basic will be absolutely fine so what I'll probably do on this is a when I do the mill it will be the same roughly the same VFD slightly bigger I'll probably go into a section on this on its own because if I can do this anybody can do this so with all that being said we'll press the button and if everything goes bang we won't be setting any parameters right well nothing's gone bang so that's a good start so I'm now just going to go into my parameters I need to set that one to a 1 no a 30 sorry and that basically resets the whole I think I need to set this one to a 1 that resets to factory so this is now because I don't know this is second hand so I don't know what's been put in here previously so we've factory reset so we're now going to go back in um, we start back at the beginning with parameter 10 set that to a 1 that puts us into the quick commissioning mode and go up to parameter 100 which is my power rating and that should be a zero which it is that says it's kilowatts and 50 hertz parameter 304 rated motor voltage default is 230 which is correct so we don't change that next one is rated motor current so that says 3.2 amps, I need to bring that down to 1.1 amps, that's that set. The next one is the rated motor power, which is at 3 quarters of a kilowatt, that needs to be 0.35, that's that done. The next one is rated motor frequency, which I don't know why it's asking me that, but anyway it's set to 50 hertz. The next one is rated motor speed, that defaults 1395 on the motor plate on here says 1400, so we've set that. The next one is selection of command source, so this is where I'm going to command the VFD from and I've got the operator panel on here or some remote stuff which I don't have, so I need to set that to a 1, which means I'm operating it off this. The next one is selection of how I want to change my frequency same deal I want to do it from this panel using these arrow keys so that's a one the next one minimum motor frequency is set to a zero I'm going to put that to one hertz because when you turn it on and it's at zero it's not trying to do anything uh, you've got to get past one hertz before it will try to do anything and I think that's safer um, so that's that done that's 1080 next one 1082 is maximum motor frequency 
was 50 hertz which is correct the next one is the ramp up time which is set to 10 seconds as default I'm going to bring that down to 2 seconds two seconds the next one is deceleration again defaults 10 I'm going to bring that down to 2 as well and the next one is the end of commissioning and I'm going to select one which is end quick commissioning with factory reset of all of the parameters so we'll go for that one so we'll put that to a 1 it says busy that's my setup done I press function I press that and that gets us to ready to press go and see what happens so I'll move the camera away and we'll hit the start button and see what kind of reaction we get okay so I've been around the machine and I've oiled up all the parts that I'm expecting to move just in this test I'm not I'm not gonna be moving the bed axis or anything this is just the the ram and maybe the table cross feed will have a play with that if this works so I haven't cheated this is straight after you've just seen me do this so I don't know whether this is going to work go bang do nothing have a fault no idea so I'm going to hit start and see what happens so cross your fingers here we go oh <laughs> the excitement it's working so that's at 5 hertz. And that's at 50 hertz. <laughs> oh yes. So let's try this table feed. Our table feed works. Our ratchet mechanism works. Try it in the opposite direction. Well, I don't know if you guys are as excited as I am, you probably aren't, but that is thoroughly thoroughly exciting after a year's work on this machine to see that moving and to hear how quiet it is has just blown me away I am utterly utterly over the moon let's just put it back on I just want to try this clutch mechanism So that all works. And also on this machine, oh sorry, on this VFD, I've got a jog function which is probably really useful for setup. So you can manually hold the button and jog, which is, as I say, good for setup probably. And then obviously with the variable frequency, I don't have to mess around changing belts. I can alter the speed of the machine just on the VFD. And if I want to go faster, I've got another pulley's worth of speed. No, sorry, two pulleys worth of speed. Yeah, that's right. I can go two more pulleys with the speed. So this thing could be really jumping about if I put this on the fastest speed, which I don't intend to do. I'm quite happy with that. Well, there we go. I'm really tempted to fix this vice down to the table and stick something in it, but I'm not going to do that. And the next job is I've got to get the covers done. The final job on the machine is the two belt guards which is going to be a thoroughly boring episode. I apologise in advance, but it needs done. So they need to be stripped, cleaned, painted and fitted to the machine. But, yeah, I'm blown away. I am honestly blown away with the machine and with the fact that I've managed to do something electrical. 
that's that good. <laughs> right, on that happy note, I'm going to go back to the board and we will close this episode out. Happy days. Well, there we go, guys. There's probably doctors out there that if they saw how excited a very simple man can get over something so thoroughly boring, probably, to other people, they would probably have me in a white coat and in the back of a van and locked up somewhere. <laughs> I am thoroughly, thoroughly pleased with that. And, yeah, nothing else to say. Just fantastic. That's the culmination of a lot of hard work over a year, stripping that machine doing all the work rebuilding it and again I've not gone into the full depths as other people have done so I've gone light on this really I've not been scraping surfaces and all that stuff but yeah what a what an achievement I'm really really pleased with all of that especially the electrics you know I keep saying it I am no electrician don't really understand this stuff particularly well but can just about batter my way through it and get a result which is what we've done there so I say it again, don't copy me, but if I can do it, anybody can do it, because I really don't understand this stuff. So hopefully that gives other people the confidence that, to have a go if they want to have a go, but please take advice if you are not confident, don't follow what I've done. So with all of that being said, I can't stop looking at it. With all that being said, I'm off to turn the camera off and play with that for a bit and just have a look around it, watch it, just play with that VFD and uh, just uh, bask in my achievement. So thank you all very much for watching. Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers. And we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else. <laughs>